The Zelda games are known for their unique art styles spanning across just about every single entry in the series. Each of these look beautiful and the diverse set of art styles greatly contribute to the charm of these beloved titles. Just by taking a look at specific environments or characters is more than enough to immediately know which game they are a part of. And with Tears of the Kingdom being the most recent Zelda game, I thought I'd take a moment to really appreciate how truly stunning this game is, and how easily it crafts immersion through its gorgeous and unforgettable environments. Before I go on, it's important to note that lots of the things said in this video also apply to Breath of the Wild, however, Tears of the Kingdom does implement quite a few new elements which take the already established art style of Breath of the Wild and push it to perfection. I'd also like to point out that this video will act as not only an appreciation of Tears of the Kingdom, but the beauty of the entire Zelda series. You know, there's something quite special about the passage of time. Throughout the years, people change, life changes, and new advancements are made. In particular, technology has seen vast improvements over the last few decades, leaving each generation of consoles with something specific to that era. The Nintendo 64 was Nintendo's first true dive into the 3D world of gaming, and along with it came many beloved classics, with one of the most significant titles being The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This legendary experience was unforgettable to say the least, and one of the biggest reasons for this was due to it being the first ever Zelda game fully realized within a 3D world. For the first time ever, we got to see Link and Zelda similar to how their artwork depicted them, which may not seem like a big deal now, but it was nothing short of inspirational at the time. This art style would carry on to the unsettling sequel, Majora's Mask. These two games both share the same artistic flair, which was clearly meant to take on a more serious tone befitting of their respective adventures. But then came The Wind Waker, which was a complete 180 from the two Nintendo 64 titles boasting a brand new cartoonish and stylized look. And while this was heavily criticized way back during its time of release, almost every fan of the series has come to adore the vastly unique art style put on display in The Wind Waker. This diverse take on the Zelda series crafted a gorgeous experience, marking everything you see with an insurmountable amount of charm. The Great Sea is beautiful no matter the time of day or weather conditions, the enemies are expressive and goofy, and this iteration of Link is the most lovable goofball gaming has ever produced. And the genius behind all of this is that deep down, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker is actually one of the darkest games in the franchise from a narrative standpoint, but the art style is so lively and cheery that you'd never even guess that just by looking at it, which just makes the sudden realization of the situation that much better. After The Wind Waker came Twilight Princess, which essentially tried to copy the art style of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, except update and improve upon it in every single way. Twilight Princess had the exact opposite effect that The Wind Waker had, however, as when it was first released, the crowd went absolutely ballistic to say the least. And why shouldn't they have? They were getting exactly what they wanted, a spiritual successor to one of the most beloved games, Ocarina of Time, but with an even more realistic art design and a mature tone highly reminiscent of those previous Nintendo 64 entries. However, as time went on, unlike with The Wind Waker, people started to notice many of the flaws with Twilight Princess's design, most notably how aged it was already looking only a few years after release. That was no doubt the worst part about making a realistic Zelda game on the Wii, as that console wasn't very powerful, therefore, the character models and assets didn't turn out as well as something like the timeless design of The Wind Waker. That being said, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is still a great looking game when running in HD, and the more realistic tone sets the game apart from the rest of the series. Skyward Sword is no doubt the most divisive entry in the Zelda franchise. The motion controls mixed with the unnecessarily high amount of filler content drag the experience down to a grinding halt for many players while other players enjoyed the longer, more drawn-out story and linear world design. But as for the art style itself, this certainly is one of the more inspired art directions in the series. And what I mean by this is that it often looks like a surreal blend of Twilight Princess and The Wind Waker. The characters have that more realistic design, at least characters such as Link and Zelda, but the cartoonish style from The Wind Waker is no doubt present as well. Skyward Sword also takes much of its inspiration from painterly elements. This is used throughout the entire game, but one of the most prominent ways it was put into use was by acting as a sort of masking to faraway objects. This makes distant landmarks appear much more attractive than they would otherwise due to the Wii only being capable of displaying graphics at a maximum resolution of 480p. 
It's quite a genius way of problem solving to put it frankly. But with the end of Skyward Sword would come a turning point for the Zelda franchise, when Breath of the Wild would release on the Nintendo Switch's launch day to critical acclaim. And wow, what an experience. As everyone knows, Breath of the Wild single-handedly revolutionized the entire franchise, changing everything we previously came to know and understand about the series. But this all paid off as Breath of the Wild remains as one of the most beloved and influential video games to this day. And the same can go for its art style, as this is my personal favorite look out of the entire franchise. It's a beautiful blend of the Wind Waker cell shading along with Twilight Princess's more realistic character designs. It also takes the charm of the characters' personalities from Skyward Sword and implements them into its own characters. Breath of the Wild really is a perfect blend of all the Zelda games from a graphical point of view, but as I said earlier, much of the praise I gave to Breath of the Wild's design also applies to Tears of the Kingdom, and vice versa. However, Tears of the Kingdom did release six whole years after Breath of the Wild, which naturally meant that the team had plenty of time to dissect Breath of the Wild and improve upon it in as many ways as they possibly could. This includes the assets that make up the experience, and where Breath of the Wild was simply breathtaking for much of the adventure, Tears of the Kingdom enhances everything about its predecessor's look to the point where my jaw was visibly dropped at some moments in the game. The addition of the Sky Islands gave the developers the opportunity to express sunsets and sunrises in a more dramatic way, which led to some of the greatest looking moments out of any Zelda game. These sunsets are truly magnificent to experience in the sky, and witnessing as one slowly transitions into a luminescent green skyline takes my breath away every time. The snowy wastelands of Hebra manage to make you feel like you're actually stuck in a blizzard, with genius sound design and blooming particle effects which only amp the immersion up even further. The heavy downpour of rain feels cautionary yet calming at the same time, and the sunny days cast a feeling of hope and guidance throughout the land of Hyrule. Running around the fields has never felt as impactful as it does here, and you can literally not take a single look in any direction without instantly finding numerous things to focus your attention onto. Whether that be the floating islands way off in the distance, some strange occurrence in the fields, or the depths, your eyes will be glued to the screen 24-7 guaranteed. Tears of the Kingdom is a very appealing game to look at, and much like The Wind Waker, you'll likely never get tired of resting your eyes upon its truly beautiful world. The Legend of Zelda is one of the most visually striking franchises of all time. Each and every entry strives to bring an entirely new flavor to the graphics and art style department, all the while respecting the gameplay and crafting a visual design centered around the story elements and personalities of the characters and world. Never has a franchise innovated as frequently as the Zelda franchise as far as the graphics go, as Nintendo never seems to be afraid of pushing the series to its absolute limits. We've gone from Realistic Link to Cartoony Link and straight back to Realistic Link just like that, and it never managed to feel jarring even a single time. The future of this franchise will no doubt be very interesting to witness, as Nintendo's choice of art style is very unpredictable with The Legend of Zelda, but that's part of what makes it so magical when a new game is announced. The excitement of getting to see what the new iteration of Link and Zelda will look like is fascinating, and always feels worth the wait between entries. But with all that said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.